Welcome back to Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is our Confederate campaign that started in February 1861. It's now the 28th of August, 1862. We're carrying straight on from the last episode. So if you're new here, pop on my channel. You know how YouTube works, don't you? Go on my channel and find the video you were up to. Or start from the very beginning via the playlists. We've completed a few playthroughs of Grand Tactician The Civil War. But anyway, we're right here at the Battle of Jefferson City. Where we are facing a meeting engagement. Okay, let's see what the... Let's remind ourselves what, what it was. Because, I mean, I'm recording these pretty much back to back. <laughs> because we're away for a few days on a little family holiday for a couple, just a couple of days up the coast at Northumberland. Bamborough we're visiting and sea houses, those kind of places, rugged up the coast. If you've never been to North East England, then if, and if you ever come here, you should go and check those places out. Anyway, so we're facing Harney with his Union Army, the Department of the West. 23,000 men and 92 guns. We've got somewhere in the region of 15,000 men and 19 guns, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, the enemy army is green and the morale is reported to be eager. Now, that might be something that goes in our favour because our army is not green. We are reasonably experienced. These men under Cheatham have fought a bunch of battles already. Their supply situation is outstanding. Okay. Our supply is also outstanding, so that's fine. Um... Right, so let's get rid of these little barrels and have a look what we actually have available to us. Let's first let's let's actually have a look. Cramps Hill. So it's saying this is a meeting engagement, but really we're on the offensive here. Uh, even though we're outnumbered and outgunned, we're gonna have to fight an offensive battle, even though Cheatham said the defensive and Cheatham is not the aggressor here. We are holding our ground. Um, Harney was coming to attack us. Minor defeat. So his morale, how how the federal morale can be higher than ours, I, I will not understand. We've been hammering the federals in every single battle. But anyway, the numbers at the top there, 24,000 for them, 14,495 for us. And we're going to have to attack up this rancid looking terrain. Oh, it's not actually as bad on the ground. Well, I mean, it's pretty bad. We're going to have to go through these woods, but at least they'll offer some shelter to our attack we've got micah jenkins with some guns so we're gonna we're gonna cross here straight over we've got buckner with his infantry division and gardner with another infantry division so it's, it's a fairly small force here and we've got posey with one cav brigade directly under cheatham so he uh has his own he, has, he doesn't have a division commander, basically. I'm going to form these guys up in the march columns so we can get moving. I know it says a meeting engagement. This is not a meeting engagement. We're going to have to attack here. I mean, he already has the objective. This is a ford, actually. They're all fords. There's no bridge here, I don't think. Uh, no bridge, so no easy crossing, anyway. Right, so we're going to take our time. These guys are not mega veterans or anything like that, but they have fought a few battles. They're reasonably well armed. They're not armed with the worst weapons we have. <laughs> and they're alright, actually. This um, Buckner's division is armed a little better. The Cav only have mixed cavalry weapons. It's one of those things we're really short of. Um, the guns, we've got two lots of Napoleons. So, you know, again, nothing very exciting there on the gun front. But, let's get started here. I've, I've waffled for way long enough. Actually, oh, actually, do we need to cross the river? No, we don't need to cross the river at all. I'll reform our men, and I'll see you back then. All right, so we're ready to march. I'm going to press play here, and we're going to get started. And we're going to go. Posey's going to go first with his cav to see if we can spy anything. It looks like some stone walls down here. I mean, I doubt we'll be able to use them, but, you know, if we have to pull back, it might be possible to pull into here. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we switch straight to attack the enemy um, because he'll have that high ground. Uh, this is going to be a difficult fight. It's... It's certainly one I won't be hesitant to pull out of if we need to. I will not throw men away the way the AI does. If I can help it, I mean, if I can get them out, I will get them out. If this battle isn't going our way, which, I mean, it might not because, like I said, we are fairly well outnumbered here. 
let's wait and see. Let's see how it goes. I mean, I won't obviously just assume we're going to lose this battle because we're outnumbered because it doesn't always happen like that in this game. But we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Okay, so this is fairly interesting. I'm going to slow this down. I can see his men over here. At least I think we can. Or is that defences? Oh, maybe that's just a wall, actually. Yeah, it's, I think it's just a wall. It looks like he's formed up up here. Carve quite a lot of them. So that's 20 of his guns. Now, it said he had way more than that. I can't remember. I think there's some way we can see what he has, or up to a point, anyway. Yeah, we've got no information, really. 100 men, blah, 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 yeah. Yeah, nothing really. I mean, I would expect nothing like that either, to be honest. Because how would we know? Okay, so he is, like, predictably lined up here to defend this objective, which, you know, that's obviously what he's going to do. It's logical. It makes sense. Question is, are we going to attack from this side or at least partly I think maybe we'll attack from from his left flank with the cav we'll press our infantry up through the hill through the, the hill here maybe uh, it's going to be tough if we come directly up this road we're going to come into fire from 20 guns if we come through the woods we're going to be disorientated uh, disorganised uh, it's a tricky one it's a really tricky one so I'm, I'll tell you what, we're going to move Buckner up this way. We're going to maybe try and have a two-pronged attack. But obviously it's difficult to attack when you're outnumbered. We, we're 5,000 men down. Plus God knows how many guns. We've hardly got any guns. Yeah, so he's got a, a, a solid defensive position set up here, actually. And Posey is under fire here as well. That's not good. Let's pull him back a little. What's he got? There's lots of horse artillery. Uh, 10 guns. 10. 10. So that's 30 guns. So we've found 50 of his guns. The majority of his force seems to be on this left-hand side of the hill. It means we can't occupy those heights, obviously, which is, makes sense. But this now makes sense for us to at least swing with Buckner. And attack up this side. There's a little path through the woods as well. So maybe we get Buckner here and form him up and press on it and see what happens. So we're going to have to send some guys up the centre here. And that's going to be up to this division. Gardner's division. I feel like we'll probably launch attacks tomorrow. I don't think we're going to be able to get a shot off with our guns at all. But we're going to move them up. So we're all, they're already disrupted the cohesion and stuff. We haven't even really done anything yet. <laughs> so we'll get these guys in position and likely make our move tomorrow. Because it's already past 6pm. 1800 hours. So I think Posey would be out of range here, surely. There's no way we're going to get any shot off here. Up the hill. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an infantry slog. It might actually be worth bringing the guns up this flank to support the attack. But then if we need to pull out quickly, the guns are not going to be pulling out quickly. Uh, but then we might not need to pull out. I mean, we may not. We may be able to carry this, but it's difficult to attack when you're outnumbered. And this ground is pretty favourable to the defender, I would say. Difficult to attack. Um... We don't have the men to make a substantial flanking movement and frontal assault because we just haven't got we haven't got the men. As simple as that. We're making well, we're gonna have to make do with what we've got. We do have some decent range on these guys. Mississippi rifles from Mosby. Reboard muskets. Reboard muskets. And Augustine rifles. I mean so it's this division's armed slightly worse, but this is nice that they've got Mississippis and Springfield rifle muskets, so that's pretty good. So we're going to pop these guys 
up the hill a little. We're going to send out skirmishers. The thing is, what do we do with the guns? I'm leaning towards swinging them up here to support this attack. I think that might make sense. But it's almost 2100, and I think that'll be the end of the of the day. So we're going to start again, fresh at 6 a.m. Guns disrupted because they were moving, of course. Uh, oh, we can actually deploy quite a way further up than I thought we could. But they will be fragmented there, so they, it's going to take them a moment to get themselves sorted out. I don't know how the guns are going to work, but if we bring them up here for close support, I feel like 28 Napoleons, 12-pound smoothbores blasting in there. It's got to be effective up to a point. I'll tell you what, even though we probably aren't going to use them, we've got 6.5 engineering points, so why not build some breastworks in case we need to pull back down this hill? You never know. It might come in handy. All right. So we're going to give the guns a moment. I, I don't know how well they're going to move up this track. Um, we're going to give these guys a little time as well because they're fragmented and broken up. Oh, Parsons has a has a perk as well. Uh, I'm going to give him sharpshooters so for long range fire because he's got those Mississippis. Iron discipline for Clark's brigade. Anyone else got a perk? Uh, nope, they've already got some. Ah, yeah, he's got one. Cool. Um... I'm going to go with Iron Discipline as well. Let's press play. And we're going to just wait a moment while these guys recover their cohesion. I don't think it'll take mega long, so just, just hang fire. The guns. Now I'm not sure about the guns. Um, but... In all honesty, we weren't going to get a shot off here. We can't really move up onto this hill because of the, uh, the enemy positions, basically. So it makes sense to move the guns onto the flank. Yeah, so we're fine. We're fine here. Let's get out some skirmishers from these guys and see if we can see anything else. Yeah. Oh... Yeah, <laughs> we can see something else. We're going to move our skirmishers up to the edge of the woods. Hopefully not quite in range. I mean, they've got guns here, 15. Uh, they've kind of redeployed. I wonder if... I don't want to move these guys too far forward. If we bring the guns to the edge of the hill, uh, edge of the forest, yeah, I still don't think we're even going to be able to get a shot. We'd have to really get them up on top of this little hill, which uh, obviously is far too close to the enemy lines. He's got troops out here. Are they skirmish us, maybe? I think so. So it's it's actually it's fairly decent deployment actually from the AI. He hasn't left anybody up here, it seems, though. So possibly our Cav can swing in and support the attack, our attacks. Um, right. There's nothing for it. We're going to press this attack. We're going to sweep straight up here. So Gardner's division is going to attack up this, up this side. They're going to be supported by Posey's cavalry, who are going to come in from the rear. And we'll see how this goes. I mean, I know it's going to be a difficult fight. We, we know that. So we've got Little, Brian Good, uh, Good Brian even, uh, and George Stewart. Okay, and here we go. Plenty of cannons. Plenty of infantry. Plenty of defences. Should we pull our guns out again and bring them across here? Can we get a shot into those guys? Which way will they, they'll come too close there? No. Um, I think the guns are... Oh, he's moving. He's reforming. Yeah, 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 okay. So I think the guns are going to be really ineffective here. It's uh, I hadn't realised they were set up like that. So let's move this artillery division down this way. <coughs> I'm going to try and bring them across and offer some support to this attack. 
If we can keep some of his men pinned here, that would be ideal, of course. We don't even might not even need to press an attack on this side. This is fine. Our skirmishers are taking artillery fire. That's absolutely fine. Anyone firing at skirmishers here is not firing at our main force, which, you know, that's what we want. <laughs> I'm sure it's not what Clark's guys want, but you know. <laughs> He's shifting. Responding our movement. I, I do get a feeling actually that the AI's been a little better these two last last two patch updates. I mean, I don't think they're amazing, but he's doing a better job than before. I, I, I do think that. I don't think it's just my imagination. So they're doing fine. They've lost one man. I might bring Parson skirmishes over here. Actually, we're going to start harassing these guys. I hope these dudes are not too well armed. <laughs> Where's the infantry fire? We lost 58 men. I guess they are well armed. I have no doubt that we won't be able to fire on those guys at all. Yeah, they are definitely well armed. In range. We aren't in range in any way. Hundred casualties already. This is probably not going to go well. You know, sometimes you just get a feeling about these things, and I get the feeling that this is not going to go well. Little in contact, no shit. Yeah, I'm gonna get ripped on shreds here. We can't actually get a shot on here. Excellent. Did not expect that. Okay, skirmishes. We're going to keep Parsons' uh, brigade up here to hopefully keep these guys pinned. Maybe they don't know how many men we have here, or rather how few men we have here. And 300 casualties. They have lost 500. Come on, push them out. Ah, uh, now they've got no target. I'm sure before, just a minute ago, it said we could hit things. Now we can't hit shit. <laughs> 
I mean, their guns obviously can hit ours. Right, come on, skirmishers, in there. Get some shots in. Second brigade going to fight the last man, no doubt. I'm surprised our men haven't ran yet. Skirmishers, Clark skirmishers, and Clark's brigade. Then we're all going to push in here. Seven hundred casualties, and they're still just. Gotta keep an eye on his main force. Because <laughs> if they move out, obviously, then, you know, uh, Parsons isn't gonna be able to stop. Right, 800 casualties, 600 left in the field, and he's still fighting on. This is bullshit. About time. He hasn't committed his main force. It's, uh, I'm surprised at that. Well, I'm sort of surprised at that.
so friend, we're gonna have to pull them back. Oh, no option for pull back, I mean fuck. That means they're gonna turn. Oh there we go, they're pull back. Pretty grim fight, so either way, I mean, whichever way this goes, I don't, I still don't really know. I feel like the Yankees have got the upper hand here. Posey's losing a lot of men. I should probably wait to pull him in. But they've lost, I mean, another brigade broken there. But Posey needs to pull himself out of that combat. Stuart, push forward please. Good job. Little's almost spent. Uh, Brian's men are exhausted. They're very, very tired anyway. Clark slammed into the flank here. They've done a pretty damn good job actually. At least uh, Posey's men have managed to extricate themselves from that fight. We're going to keep pressing, and I think this is the difference here is that our men are pretty experienced. His men are raw on the whole. be in here as soon as possible. No, 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 I pressed the wrong button here. What's going on here? Come on, Mosby. He's miles away. The orders will take a while to get there. Hope Clark can extricate himself like Posey just did.
this is a really grim fight. It's one of the grims I've ever had on this game, actually. Here comes Parsons. I want him to slam into his rear. Like I say, whichever way this fight actually goes, I've, it's gone all right, actually, in general. My calf got slammed pretty hard. I'm still nervous. I don't really want to bring them back in. I accidentally pressed for those guys to go and collect some guns, but I didn't really want that because obviously the guns are up front. Now I can't reattach them. Nice move cavalry over to this side. Stuart losing men, yeah. Everyone's losing men. Done for. Hope these guns can add something. Pretty fire going straight in. That's got to help a little at least. Keep it together, Stuart. Come on, man. Doing a good job here, lads. I think our guns arrived just in time here. Not that I want to jinx it or anything, but I think so. Major victory is the swung do. Little's men fought so hard. So did uh, all these guys, actually, all of them. Stuart especially lost half his force. This was a good battle. It was really grim, really, really harsh. Losses terrible for both sides. Worse for him. <laughs> Parsons unfortunately didn't get into the fight, but you know that means we've got still got a fresh brigade in this army. Seems to me he's pulling out. I think the two guns arriving on that flank uh, came just at the right time. Oh man, I knock it. Let's just speed this up and see what happens. We're not really in any shape to pursue in any way. At all. Is he just forming a new defensive line? I think he's pulling out. I think we've had enough. Six and a half thousand casualties, that was three thousand. Looks like a glitch of some sort. Is it just a bottleneck or something, maybe? I don't like this bit, that's for sure. Uh, 
Uh, they are broken. I mean... Yeah, it feels like yet another broken mechanic from this game. Why have they not... Why have we not had the withdrawn notification? They're all withdrawn, I mean... But since he hasn't told us where it's withdrawn, I'm going to assume that this is not going to work properly. Let's wait and see. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. The withdrawal timer hasn't come up. The message to say he's withdrawn hasn't come up. Um, and that sort of thing is not a good sign in this game in general. Not at all. Because I suspect it's going to leave me with no enemy on the field and the battle timer just running. And it's going to keep doing that till I press withdraw. Which then will count as a loss towards us, no doubt. It's very frustrating, this. I mean, where are they going? What the hell are they doing? The enemy is retreating. Oh, well, at last. Well, so I had to actually run this the whole time. At least you didn't have to watch it all. But, you know. Uh. Well, that was a victory. We lost 3,000 men. They lost 6,500. Let's read what they have to say. That literally had to run until just before 2,100. And then that came up. Well, screw it. <laughs> We got a major victory. Cheatham done a damn good job here with his men. Um, I feel the attack was fairly well organized from itself. Uh, it was not easy. These kind of battles are not easy, even with this AI. Uh, but, you know, oh, Jenkins has become famous. He's only, I've only just made him a Brigadier General, promoting him from Lieutenant. Uh, but yeah, so this game is not easy, but Posey has fallen into disgrace. They broke because of a broken game mechanic, I want to say, because they were charged and uh, came into contact with an already broken artillery detachment. Uh, and somehow his brigade broke, but yeah, what can I do? This is the third cavalry commander in a row now who's been broken, basically, in a battle. Uh, and, yep. I just think it's garbage. But anyway, they need to look at this losing face thing. Let's, let's have a quick look. Uh, great victory, blah de, blah de, blah. They lost 6,448 men, 719 killed, 481 captured. Morales believes to be confident. Is it? Our casualties total 2,955, 417 killed, 447 missing, and the rest wounded. We captured 3,500 rifles and 15 guns from the battlefield. General Morris loses face. I mean, all their generals should have lost face there. Defensive position outnumbering us. Uh, but they should now withdraw I think but we're down to bare bones here 11,300 men a quick look through here Sterling Price he's, he's our largest force here. he's got 35,000 men the reserve corps under Smith is coming over here uh, towards Jefferson City to support the Missouri district under Cheatham um, we're going to move Van Dorn's corps into Roller the Van Dorn's going to help out here. He's part of the Army of the Mississippi, which is based at Cairo. But we need him over there, if I'm perfectly honest. We need another unit here because the Union just has so many troops up here. I, I don't even know how many he's got, but they build a depot here. They're building a depot here, which means there's another army right there. Uh, Pillow only has five and a half thousand men. He'll have about eight thousand when some more recruits join him. Let's have a quick look what, if what we have available here. Uh, oh, we've got some some things available. Recruitment officers, um, co rebuilt ironclads, Confederate gunboats, construction of Confederate gunboats and cotton-clad rams requires simple shipyard. Uh, uh, more volunteers, ironclads. I mean, I'd like to have ironclads, but you know the wars coming towards 1863, the navy isn't really doing much. Um, Troops training level increases faster when they're encamped. I like the look of this one as well. I'm, I think I'm actually going to go with training manuals. Uh, no, no, no. It's too late for that in the war, surely. 
Maybe not. Yeah, let's go trade manuals. Let's yeah. We can knock trade deals up to ele the eleventh tier. That makes us more money. We're not making very much money here. We're struggling. Um, we're already on trade deals ten. So more lu lucrative trade deals plus fifty percent. It's not around the next one. Plus fifty five percent, might as well. Right. Yeah, Van Dorn. I've, I've kind of messed him around. He's been around all over the place. Cheat him. Still exactly the same. You'd think his stats would go up. Jenkins said he was a, became famous, but he hasn't got the little symbol. His stats went up a little bit, I think. I'm going to give him Mississippi Rifles. All right, let's get some time going. We'll not fight another battle in this episode, but I'll let a little bit of time go to see what happens. I wonder why he's not using the railroad. I'm sure I ordered him to use railroads. Oh. The army from Michigan come down. He's just not going to be in range to support him, I don't think. I could have sworn I told him to use railroads already. Let's go ahead and replace that Carve Commander, Posey. Uh, actually, have we got any weapons to give these guys? Uh... Alright, let's go with Lucius Walker. What weapons did we actually capture there? I mean, I can't really... Oh, we've got some... Oh, Lawrence Rifles has arrived. Right. So these reboards have got poor accuracy and 40 range. Lawrence's have got mediocre accuracy, but three rounds a minute also, which makes a difference. Have we got anything else arrived? I don't understand what, which weapons we captured there. We, it said we captured a bunch of rifles, but, you know, obviously non-decent. <laughs> A handful of Springfield rifles, that, that looks like that was it. But we can upgrade these guys, and these guys are going to fight again in a minute. That's Smith. Smith's men are armed pretty well. Possible, anyway. Alright, so we've got a few guys queued up to come into Pillow's command. I want to add some artillery to that as well. And I'm actually going to use draftees from Missouri for that. I know I said I wasn't going to use drafts, but for some artillery, I think that's okay. Yeah. How long are they going to be? 19 days. Sadly, we've got nothing much to give them. Let's give them 12-pound field guns. All right, then. So it looks like we're going to have another fight at Michigan... Uh, at Jefferson City. <sighs> 15,000 of them this time. At least we've got some more Lawrence rifles. The Reserve Corps, uh, Corps is in range at least as well, so they will get reinforcements in eight hours. But this battle is not going to happen now. We're going to leave this for now. We're going to fight Thomas Meager with his Army of Michigan. And it's going to be the Missouri District under Cheatham. And Martin L. Smith's Corps, Reserve Corps. 12,000 men, so we will outnumber them eventually, but it's going to take 8 hours according to this, which probably means it's a little longer on the campaign map. So we're going to have another scrap at Jefferson City, so two battles at Jefferson City in one episode. Who would have thought it? I don't think I've ever even sent troops to Jefferson City before in this game, and now we're going to fight two battles there. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope, and I hope uh, that you're going to come back and watch some more. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, and come back for more, like I've just said. Anyway, have a great day, whatever you're doing. I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.